practice artist with a capital A, but maybe every creative person is doing something like that. Yeah. Maybe this is, they are telling the same story over and over again. Maybe writers are. Maybe they, there's a, um, mm. maybe there's a, a, a self-portrait they're trying to master. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Possibly. Mm. Possibly one is sort of, you know, dancing around that the heart nub of uh, reality that you know you're trying mm. to get at, and you never mm. quite can. And, and uh, sometimes the elements come together in a way that gets a lot closer. I was trying to think of uh, <coughs> performances in mainstream films uh, uh, in which a uh, middle-aged uh, gay man <coughs> with some melancholy, some sadness, or, and it's really not a very long list. In fact, the only one that really popped through for me before your performance was Paul Winfield, way back in a film called Mike's Murder that Jim Bridges did. I don't know. And, uh, and nobody sees it because it's not on DVD. Interesting. But well, I guess really Death, Death in Venice. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, Dirt Brothers. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, um, I think mm -hmm. what's interesting about this, I, I mean, I, I don't know what it is about his being gay that affects the story. It's something that I haven't... I'm having to answer questions about it quite a lot without really knowing any answers. I mean, the character struck me very deeply, and I don't know whether the fact that he's gay is critical to adding to his isolation or not. I don't know if it adds poetry to the story or whether it's irrelevant. Um, the fact of his not being invited to a funeral, 1962, uh, the, the elements of his lecture to the students, but. There are all sorts of social constraints that you could probably find to replace those. You know, I mean, if if, my, if if George's lover had been a woman and they hadn't been married and the family disapproved of their relationship, you could right. still have the same moment with the funeral. You know, I I, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to. I think there are an awful lot of people who have have wanted it to, it to be more central or to make it about that, and I understand that. Mm. Because I think there is a need to put some of these issues out there. In fact, Prop 8 was being passed. It was passed the very day I played that scene. It was oh, that really? day, yeah. I was in California. And Barack had just won the election and Prop 8 went through. Yeah. And you thought, wow, maybe it, we, it still is 1962. Um, however, I think that what greater victory could you have for any group? considers itself marginalized, quite justifiable, hmm. than to be given a rightful place in, 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 the, world of, in the world of dignity and, hmm. and, 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 and profound recognition of, of what love and loss is. You know, why differentiate between um, someone's love and someone else's love? You know, depending right. on their sexual orientation. Mm. Mm. So I, I, I love the fact that Isherwood didn't push those issues to the forefront and yet was completely honest about it. I mean, I think that is very progressive and very advanced. It says, big deal. You know, this is love. It's not gay love. It's just, it's just love, you know. It's, and, uh, yeah. and I think it was very radical for that reason. Uh, because any person who would want to discriminate would be wrong-footed by that, you know. You're not getting a militant statement, you're just opening a book and going, my God, this, it's all normal. The, uh, the thing that stays with me, I think, finally the most is the thought that uh, it's the small, seemingly insignificant things in life that are finally the most treasured and the most enjoyed in the most fullest sense, you know. And yeah. It's really a, that's the most lovely thing I think about. Well, the, I think that's what stuck with me most. Um, this film has haunted me more than most. Um, not, I mean, I'm not talking about the experience of watching it. I, it's a separate thing, but uh, mm. um, just having done it, before I, I saw it, it, it hung around a long time. And I, it wasn't images of George, it was images of what George sees that hung around a long time. Mm. It was... Um, the idea that you, the child you see every day across the street, who you actually have no time for at all, mm. suddenly becomes the most beautiful example of a child that you could imagine. Yeah. Um, that all you know, the, the most beautiful face he's ever seen is actually just some red boy. 
that the sunsets mm-hmm. just smog, but today right. it's it's vibrant and glorious. And I, you know, I got all these people that seem to recognize uh, this sadness and look at him with some kind of compassion. I see, you know, Nick Holt's face looking back at or Julianne or Matthew. Mm. And I, I, I find all those elements, uh, I came away feeling very touched by all that, you know. I really love Nick Holt in this thing. He's really wonderful. Good. My God, that's like wonderful. He's, I, his face really haunts me. And his, and his focus that he holds on to. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. I was asking the advocate writer, because I said, is the term, uh, I was told by a gay friend of mine that is the term, that the term Twinkie is uh, kind of not in favor or it's not being used. And the, the advocate guy, oh, no, 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 that's, that's completely wrong. It's, it's very much part of the, there are Twinkie nights at bars. There are. Oh, really? And I was wondering, is, there a, is that true what, from what you pick up on the vernacular in England? Is that a term that people use no. with any... No, no. I, it's not something I would, would have been familiar with, really. Yeah. No. Mm. Yeah. no. But the vernacular changes... I think it's amazing, minute. though. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, it is. No, I find, having lived um, outside of England a lot, and then come back and come to and fro, I find that those, those, that kind of vernacular is the thing that changes most quickly. Mm. You know, the music scene's more or less the same, the haircuts are more or less the same, people are the same, but it's, it's, right. it's the words that yeah. change. It's... Uh, when, it, when, the, when the weather gets like this, as it is outside today, it makes me wish for, for uh, London winters, which are much milder. They are, but uh, I wouldn't uh, long for London right now. We've had the wettest November on record, and oh, we've had okay. floods and bridges collapsing, and oh. it's nothing to be envied, uh, I must tell you. Do you own anything in, in, in this country? Do you live here? Part? No, strictly no, over there. Strictly over there. I, I, I visit a lot, um, mm. because I have a lot of friends here, and I... I Absolutely love being here, particularly this city. Mm. Um, my eldest son grew up uh, for about ten years in LA, so mm. I, I was going there a lot as well. Mm. And uh, so I'm very closely connected. My mother grew up in Iowa. I spent a year of high school in the states, mm. and uh, mm. so I mean, I'm <clears throat> I feel I have a very close relationship with it. But uh, no, I've never really lived here. All right. Well, We're being very, wrapped up. very nice to have uh, met and spoken with you. Nice talking to you. And. Uh, yeah. uh, I was going to say this on the tape, but what...